Hello and welcome to another video by www.electricalpereview.com. This is Zach Stone, the lead instructor. And the subject of today's video is base changing per unit impedance. So this is actually a video I've wanted to make for quite some time because it's one of the most often asked about questions that I get in my inbox almost daily. All right, let's begin with this simple per unit formula over here, right? I can express any value by dividing that value by a base value to get it in per unit, right? For example, let's say I've got a current of 150 amps and a base value of 200 amps. I can express this 150 amps in the per unit system by dividing my actual value, right, 150 amps, divide my base value, of 200 amps to get a per unit current of 0.75 per unit. Now, what happens when I want to do a base change, right? This formula over here. I can multiply the old per unit value by my old base, right? When I do this, I get back to the actual value. Then I just divide it by the new base to go back into the per unit system, except this time expressed in a new base. For example, Let's look at our current example and call this the old current base. Let's call this current value in per unit the old per unit value. And let's use something like a new base current of 250 amps. All right, using this base change formula over here, I can find my new per unit current by multiplying my old per unit current by the old current base and dividing by the new current base, right? We're just using this formula right here in the center of your screen. So when I use this, so when I complete this using values, I've got my old per unit current, right? The 0.75 per unit that we first found times my old base, just multiplying 0.75 per unit times 200 amps. That gets us back to 150. And now we divide by our new base, right? Our new current base, which is 250 amps which brings us back into the per unit system. And when I type this in on my calculator, I get 0.6 per unit. In other words, this is our new per unit current, 0.6, expressed in a new base of 250 amps. All right, so far so good. That's just basic base changing. Now, the question is, most oftentimes in books, we see a formula that's used that looks backwards, right? In other words, when we base change percent impedance, instead of seeing our new base on bottom and our old base on top, we see a new power base on top and an old power base on bottom. You see that it looks backwards. Our percent impedance new, right, equals our percent impedance old, except this time our new base is on top and our old base is on bottom, right? It appears to be backwards from this formula that we just used. So what's going on? The key is realizing that this is actually correct. It's just that this is a shortcut method used when our new and our old voltage bases are equal and they cancel. So you can only use this in certain conditions, and we're going to show exactly what that condition is with an actual example. Now, another formula you see from time to time in books is something that looks like this, which is a base change formula, except this time we have two voltage bases, right, our old and our new, inside of parentheses, that's squared. So the question I'll often get is, hey, Zach, where did this come from? The book didn't show where it was derived from. So we're going to show that these two formulas, we'll start with this as one and this as two. We're going to show that one and two are actually the same formula of our classic base change formula right here that we just used. It's just that we have to manipulate it using our impedance terms to get there, all right? So let's take a look at exactly how we do that. All right, so here on your screen, I've got a couple of things I wanna introduce. The first is remembering that we can solve for impedance as V squared over S, right? This is your V squared over Z equals S formula, only solved for impedance. And next, I wanna show that it's important to remember that a per unit impedance or a percent impedance, right, same thing, is really your impedance value Z, which is equal to V squared over S, divided by your Z base, which is gonna be your base voltage squared divided by your base power. So here's our original base changing formula that we just used down here, right? Our new per unit 
will equal our old per unit times our old base divided by our new base. Let's use impedance terms and expand on this to see what it looks like when we start inserting our V squared over S fractions. All right, so PU old, I'm going to use Z per unit old. Next, for my old base, I've got Z B old, which is my old base impedance. And on the bottom, I'm going to have ZB new, which is my new base impedance. All right, let's continue and expand on these terms. So I've got Z per unit old, no change there. I've got a fraction, right? No change yet. Now, ZB old, what does ZB old equal? Well, we can expand on this to have ZB old equals VB old squared over SB old like this. All right, that's our old base impedance, right? VB old squared divided by SB old using the same formula, except this time we're using base values. Now on bottom, my new base impedance is going to just be our VB new squared divided by our SB new, right? Our new power base. Now notice something that should be standing out. Instead of just one fraction like we had before, when we plugged in this fraction for our old base and our new base, we now have a fraction on top of a fraction. So this is a little complicated. How do we get rid of this? Anytime I have a fraction over a fraction or a fraction being divided by another fraction, I can move this fraction on bottom to the top by just swapping these two terms. I can move my denominator to the numerator and I can move my numerator to the denominator. That's going to look something like this. So again, no change yet to our old per unit impedance no change to our old base impedance expressed as a fraction with a voltage and power term. Next, I'm going to bring this bottom fraction down here to the top, like we just said. So that means our new power base is going to go on the numerator of this fraction, and our new voltage base is going to go on the denominator of this fraction. So now we've got our new per unit impedance equals our old per unit impedance times our old voltage base squared divided by our old power base times our new power base divided by our new voltage base squared. So let's combine some terms here. First, let's combine the new and old power bases. So I've got a fraction with my new power base on top and my old power base on bottom times, almost forgot, our old per unit impedance now I've got another fraction with our voltage terms, right? VB old squared divided by VB new squared. Now, how do I get rid of this exponent? Okay, I've got one term squared divided by another term squared. So I can combine that as I've got my new per unit impedance equals my old per unit impedance times my new power base divided by my old power base. But now, before I show my voltage base fractions, I'm going to draw a parentheses like this. So here's my old voltage base on top. Here's my new voltage base on bottom. And now, this exponent right here, this squared term on top and bottom, I can move that to the outside of this parentheses, right? VB old divided by VB new. Close parentheses squared is the same thing as VB old squared divided by VB new squared. So look what we just derived. We just derived this first formula right here. Percent Z new or Z per unit new, right? Same thing, either percentage or decimal. They're both a per unit quantity. Equals our old per unit quantity times the ratio of our new power base to our old power base, right? The ratio of our new power base to our old power base times our old voltage base divided by our new voltage base squared around the parentheses, right? Our old voltage base divided by our new voltage base squared around that parentheses. Now, what happens when our old voltage base equals our new voltage base? So I'm going to clean this up real quick and let's see what happens. So if our old voltage base equals our new voltage base, what happens to this fraction with this squared term here, right? It goes away. We essentially are left with one squared, right? Since these two are equal, they cancel. We're left with one. One squared is equal to one. And one times this term over here will make no change. It'll still be this same term. 
So when VB old equals VB new, we're left with a really special condition that says our new per unit impedance is gonna equal our old per unit impedance times our new power base divided by our old power base, right? And that's the second formula from the previous slide that we just derived. Now, let's look at this for one second before we do an example of numbers. Notice how this looks backwards compared to our standard base change formula. New per unit equals old per unit. Okay, so far so good. New per unit equals old per unit. However, before we had our old base on top of our new base. And now we have our new power base divided by our new old base. So since these two bases look to be backwards, right? They look like they should be in the opposite places. This is where all the confusion comes from. But really, all it is is we had a fraction over a fraction that we rearranged to get this formula. And then in the special case when our new and our old voltage bases equal, we can cancel that term and then we're left with just this shortcut method. So notice these two formulas, our standard base change formula and our base change formula for impedance when our old and new base equal, notice they're the exact same thing. All right, so when does the old base equal the new base for our voltages? When do we get to use this shortcut? So let's look at a transmission line and plug in some values to actually get some practice using this.